Друзья, добро пожаловать в Лидян. The place I want to tell you about today was really special for us. We had been planning this trip for a month and it wasn't easy to get there. China was going through frequent quarantine measures at the time and there was a big risk of getting stuck there without the possibility of leaving. But we couldn't miss this trip because it was not just a regular journey. The city of Lijian in Yunnan province is probably one of the most beautiful places we have seen in China during all our travels. But for us, its beauty and magic were multiplied many times over because it was where we decided to take our wedding photos. I must say the pictures from the trip turn out to be just fantastic. And this is exactly what we wanted from the trip to remember China young and bright. By the way, I invite you all to follow my Instagram where you can find all photos from the trip and more. We want to remember China like this and spend cozy evenings at home, flipping through our wedding albums, reminiscing about amazing life experience in this country. In this video, I will be telling you about the Photoshop process, what it entails, how it all went down, and what kind of results you can expect. In the video description, I'll also leave the contact information for the agency we worked with, so you can reach out to them if you want to do something similar. I think you'll be really happy with the results and won't regret it. And yes, I want to remind you that if you're watching this video without subscription now is the time to fix that subscribe to the channel because you won't find this super exclusive content anywhere else so let's get started our journey to Lijian began many miles away in a small town of Jansi province but if we go back even further it all started with the payment and signing of necessary documents and the wedding agency, where we also had to select our future outfits. Usually when we travel long distances, we opted for slow trains that took a day or more. This time, however, we took a fast train and made it two transfers during the trip. The journey to Lijian is very scenic, not only in Yunnan province, but also in all other provinces we passed through the, along the way. The train ride took almost the entire daylight hours, and by the evening we arrived at the hotel, which was provided by the company for free. By the way, here's what it looks like. The first place we visited and spent several days in was the old town of Shuhe, which is one of the main attractions of the region. Взяли ли не такой наряд? Снимаем сейчас видео, делаем фотографии в этом городке. Такой наряд стоит 150 юаней в час арендовать. There are actually several old towns in Lijian, with the most popular being the old town of Lijian itself. But we didn't stay there because there's not much left of the authentic buildings 
and the whole area was turned into a tourist trap. The old town of Shuho is considered the earliest settlement of Nazi people. By the way, in Lijian, besides the Han people, there are also a large number of Nazi and E ethnic groups. An interesting fact about the Nazi ethnic group is that they are credited with creating a Damba culture, which is a unique hieroglyphic writing system. This character looks like complete pictures depicting an object or action. By the way, I asked the locals and none of them know how to read it, so these names serve more as a reminder of the past and a tourist attraction. At the same time, some of them are completely understandable and can be seen in bathrooms or restaurants. Вот обратите внимание, что они к основным иероглифам рисуют еще такие вот их собственные иероглифы, которые сохранили старый вариант письменности. Видите? И здесь дублируются практически все надписи, которые вы увидите на такие вот, на такие вот старые иероглифы. Shuho is located a bit far from the main city of Lijiang, which is why there aren't many tourists there. Если сворачиваешь на какую-то из улочек, от главной улицы отходишь куда-то. Бок просто попадаешь в такие тихие дворики. Слышите? Тишина. А здесь вот пианино слышно какое-то. Класс. Так тихо, спокойно здесь. The name of the town in the Nazi language means village under the high peaks. This is because of the towering peaks behind the settlement. Shuha is famous of its complex canal system, which resembles a honeycomb with its intricate network of canals, rivers, bridges and roads. The village itself, like the most tourist destinations, comes alive in the evening, when people gather to have dinner. Another funny fact that we noticed that there were many big dogs roaming around the area, which we hadn't seen in other parts of China. Additionally, we observed a wide variety of vegetation throughout the town, including numerous street plants and flowers that we hadn't seen in other regions of China. We even found a place with huge cacti. Смотрите, к слову о необычных растениях в Лизане, здесь есть целая улица, где растут кактусы. И смотрите, какие они огромные здесь вырастают. Просто вот на уровне крыши. популярный такой такая еда есть такие лепешки внутри начинка из лепестков роз вот. мы видели до того как сюда приехать что здесь есть такое такая штука и решили попробовать я сейчас я буду первый раз попробовать не знаю еще какая она на вкус в целом неплохо похоже как будто какая-то начинка из варенья внутри Неплохо, мне нравится. So in general, Shuha is pleasant and peaceful village, but there is no need to stay there for a long time. One day or even just an evening is enough to explore it. Сейчас проговариваем маршрут, смотрим фотографии. И вот какая первая проблема возникла. Ну, в принципе, я не сильно удивлен, на самом деле, это такая вот небольшая реальность работы с китайцами. В общем, произошло такое, скажем, недопонимание. И мы не совсем понимали, что у нас будет эм, конкретно в нашем... Примерно мы понимали, но не знали, что будет на нашем маршруте. Оказывается, что не совсем так все, как нам показывали. И сейчас вот мы разбираемся и пытаемся решить эту проблему. Э, возможно, заменить как-то маршрут или что-то еще, но вот... Это очень важный момент, ребят. Если вы хотите сделать подобную вещь и заказать какой-то вот маршрут э, свадебной фотосессии в Китае, э, заранее спрашивайте у них э, все детали, все моменты, всех мест, в которых вы потенциально будете фотографироваться. Потому что нам показывали фотографии немного другие. И прям не совсем в тех местах, где мы будем фотографироваться. Мы ride in Lijian a day before the shooting to confirm the wardrobe and locations. At this stage, 
is important to discuss the entire process of filming date and agree on the locations you'll be going to. This is what we're actually doing in this shot. These wedding agencies are a franchise type and their offices can be found in most cities of China. So there is no need to go to Lizan and sign a contract there and you probably won't be able to do that because of the tight schedule of filming crews. Everything needs to be booked in advance. So before you sign the contract, don't just look at the pictures they show you as an example. Make sure you read which locations will be going for filming and check them on the map. The beauty of your wedding album will depend on the locations that you choose. We had a little mishap with this, so we had to change our route and sign the contract on the spot, which caused some extra hassle. We spent several hours choosing our wedding outfits and waited for the next day to set out early in the morning. We headed back to our friend's place early in the morning before setting off to our plan and destinations. Our first stop was the Blue Moon Valley, which is the iconic landmark of this place. I don't know if the camera is giving me, but the color of the water is just really red. It's so dark and so dark and so dark. I haven't seen such a water in real life. On the photos I saw, на это озеро, но я думал, что оно чисто отфотошопленное всегда. Но оно реально такого цвета, просто очень красивая вода. И место, ну, словами тяжело описать, насколько здесь красиво. Вокруг горы, сосновые деревья. Потрясающе, просто место невероятной красоты. Let me tell you something. This scenery is the reason why I named Lijian as the most beautiful place in China. It's hard to come with anything more harmonious than this view. The water in this lake changes color from blue to snowy white, depending on the lighting. But most of the time it remains crystal blue. To be honest, I never seen water of this color anywhere else. By the way, this lake fed by melting snow of the Himalayas acquires a turquoise hue thanks to the dissolved copper ions in the water. And besides the unreal color of the water, there is silent joints in the background. If you're lucky with the weather and there's no clouds, you can see them in all their glory with their snow-capped peaks. But even if their peaks are covered in clouds, they still look incredible. As you may have guessed, this place is a magnet for vetting photography. Various streams and even a small waterfall is located near the lake. And if you cross the road and climb the stone step up the hill, you can reach a small kind of secret place where only photographers usually go. The view from this hill is also stunning. Since we didn't have much time to take all the pictures ourselves on the filming day, we went back here later and also went to this secret place again. Keep in mind that someone may also whistle at you from below, trying to stop you from climbing up. A small tip, just act confident as you know where you're going and that should work. Another important point is that flying a drone is prohibited in this area. And here comes another tip. Launch your drone either from this secret hill across the road or at a decent distance from all the people somewhere at the end of the valley. So this was the first location in our shooting schedule and unfortunately the last in this national park. <laughs> Раз, два, три, четыре блюда, опять. Здесь можно еще взять чай. Вот так он здесь в ведре находится чай. Можно взять себе, запарить чай. Как-то так. Ну, здесь можно еще попросить, чтобы что-то приготовили конкретное вот здесь в таких вот воды, посудинах. As I mentioned earlier, we really enjoyed the Yulong Snow Mountain National Park and returned there on our own the next day. By the way, the ticket cost was included in our filming expenses. You wanted to come here, to this place, where the mountain is, and you didn't manage to reserve a ticket. You can risk it and go like this on your car, on your car, on your car, on your car, on your car. И попытаться купить, купить на месте. Обычно могут продать, если не сильно много людей. Но бывает такое, что людей очень много и на месте билетов не продают. Нужно только заранее покупать. Но вот 
нам повезло. Людей немного, и мы смогли взять билеты. While in Lisan, you have the option to hike up to the J Dragon Mountain, but unfortunately, we had a different goal for our trip and didn't have the necessary gear. However, we still wanted to get closer to the mountain and take a walk in the beautiful forest. By the way, it's very rare to see a real forest in China. And what's even better is that there were no fences or barriers along it. You can freely walk everywhere. Just for people who don't know, you will see fences almost everywhere you go in China and forests and mountains are not exception. So let's go back to the national park. In this park you will be finding a lot of people holding oxygen tanks everywhere you go. And I want to share with you a funny story about that. To make people feel comfortable at the mountain top and avoid altitude sickness, small oxygen tanks are sold everywhere. And if something is being sold, the Chinese have to buy it, even if they don't plan on climbing to the top. It was funny to watch people use these tanks in the forest and at the base of the mountain, where there is no shortage of oxygen at all. It's kind of like, well, I'm going to the mountain, so it's gonna be cool to walk around with an oxygen tank and give myself an illusion that I'm doing something extreme. I hope you got the idea how Chinese marketing works. Oh, by the way, take an umbrella with you, because it could rain suddenly, although it usually ends quickly. Good news for drone owners. Once you get to the right location, you can fly a drone without any restrictions. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. If we hadn't been in that Blue Moon Valley, this forest and mountain would probably take the price for the most beautiful place at Lisan. We spent about four hours there, and we would have stayed there longer if it hadn't started getting dark. We've been in different places and we've seen different mountains in China. And I'm not gonna lie if I tell you that most all of the mountains look pretty much the same. The same landscape, the same plants and trees, the same stone steps with railings everywhere where you go. One of the few mountains that didn't look like the others was in Guiling. You can click that pop-up link to watch the video about Guiling. But nothing compares to what we saw in Lijiang. It's a completely different planet. The forest at the foot of the mountain is just amazing. And you can freely walk everywhere. To be honest, I haven't felt such enjoyment from admiring nature in a long time. And if we had more time, we would definitely climb to the top. And I almost forgot, the corn that we bought there is also very delicious. Едим кукурузу с таким видом. Тут очень вкусная кукуруза. Сочная, сладкая. И готовят ее, как у нас, например, просто варят в воде. В других местах Китая ее в каком-то киселе вываривают. Она такая вообще не вкусная. Здесь обалденная кукуруза. After that national park, our wedding photo session continued at a different location. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of this place, but it's a huge shooting pavilion with various decorations and buildings located near the base of the mountain. We stay there from lunchtime until evening. By the way, in addition to the photographer, there was also a videographer who captured some footage of us. I can say the video was very good. It had a typical Chinese style with the background music and a narrator in it, but again, it was a bonus so don't focus too much on that. The main products are pictures and albums that we received in the end. We've chose specifically this location for its versatility. It can accommodate almost every style that you choose, whatever it's a traditional nasi clothing or leather jackets with jeans. Well actually you can choose a different location if you want, but the eventual price of the package will be higher. Overall we ended up with over 300 pictures from this location, out of which we had to select 50 for the album. At the end of all, the contract included not just one album, but a lot of other things as well. Specifically, we received two large albums, two small gift albums, which we gave to our parents, various photo frames of different sizes, several desktop photo frames, and also they gave us a huge vertical poster of our selected picture, which can potentially be used at the entrance of any event, whether it's your wedding or engagement. To make this happen, we had to spend over two hours with a consultant to select our preferred photos. Another thing I want to mention that it's very important to discuss the style of the album. We knew that from the beginning because we didn't trust anyone's taste. And Chinese usually like to add some cheap ornaments like butterflies or baby lines to the album and photo frames. And to our little disappointment, even after our discussion, a couple of large wall photos came with rounded edges, which we didn't like, so beware of that. 
Again, overall, we were very pleased with the quality of what they sent us. Важный момент, друзья, если вы едете в горы, обязательно берите с собой солнцезащитный крем, ну или как-то, не знаю, закрывайтесь от солнца, потому что, смотрите, это вот так вот я обгорел вчера. Причем солнце ты не ощущаешь, что оно как-то тебя жарит. Его может вообще практически не быть. Ну, сами знаете, да, в горах, да, оно по-другому солнце ощущается. Но опасность от этого не меньше, а наоборот выше. И сгореть можно намного быстрее и сильнее, чем если бы там сгорели где-то в другом месте. Имейте в виду, не повторяйте наших ошибок, закрывайтесь или намазывайтесь кремом, если вы такие же беляши, как мы. So in addition to the old town of Shuhua that I told you about earlier, there is a village in Lizan that, in my opinion, has preserved its original appearance and suffered the least from the flood of modern shops. Baisha village is an ancient gem of Lizan, which, like other villages in this area, is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. It is located about 10 kilometers from the Lizan, and it's a traditional village of the Nasi people. Unlike the other two villages, here you can across truly old buildings with wooden gates and weathered brickwork on many walls. Moreover, many of the houses are actually the place where old people live, so they are here not just for show or to run some business like a restaurant. There are also some restaurants here. You can find some Harley Davidson motorcycles standing at the entrance, and in some places you can even see American flags from the window. So we stop at one of these restaurants for breakfast. Это у нас, значит, баклажаны с зеленью, разными специями, чесноком, кисло-сладким соусом и такая вот лапша, немножко бокчоя зеленью. Деревня Шухо или старая, старый город Лидян. Там практически не осталось уже старых зданий. И там все сделано просто под э, бизнес. Все, чтобы вам что-то продать, какие-то ресторанчики такие. Здесь же, несмотря на то, что есть какие-то непонятные, интересные ресторанчики, тут остались реально старые дома жителей, которые в них живут до сих пор. Здесь много таких стариков. То есть это реально село, такой старый город. Видно, что это такая невылезанная локация для туристов. И это круто. Вот сюда стоит приехать, чтобы увидеть такие вот интересные места. За моей спиной стоит врач. Тоже он Ласидзу. И он э, очень тут известный. Чтобы к нему попасть, люди ждут э, по два месяца, просто чтобы попасть к нему на прием. Э, лечит он, используя народную медицину китайскую, травы. То есть, по сути, он травник. И сейчас он какой-то ритуал совершает. Э, вот, тоже стоит памятник какому-то другому тоже врачу, видимо, который здесь жил раньше. Я, кстати, издалека не сразу понял, что это китаец. Мне вот сказали местные китайцы, что это все-таки китаец. Baisha village is a very peaceful and cozy place, where it's very pleasant to stroll around. You may accidentally wander into a courtyard and discover a huge garden with a large number of unusual plants and trees. Or you can find a workshop where people can teach you how to make copper cookware. Baisha village is a wonderful place that I recommend it to everyone who's going to visit Lizang. Well, of course, along with the Blue Moon Valley and Che Dragonstone Mountain. For the second part of the journey, we decided to explore a place no less fascinating and captivating than Lijian itself, the city of Dali. The place is famous for its towering Tsangshan Mountain, which is like a massive wall blocking the horizon. And also, it reminds me personally one of the landscapes of Hawaii. Tell me what you think about that. The city of Dali is full of cultural heritage, but the main attraction of this place is the enormous Arhai Lake which occupies more than 40 kilometers from one side to another. So before we got here, we had a plan. We want to go around the whole lake in one day on an electric scooter. So what do you think were our chances to complete this task? Огромный ливень идет. Судя по их реакции, такого здесь не было, наверное, уже давно. Well, let me tell you what. 
that was not easy to do and just a regular electric scooter would never done it. So we needed a custom bike capable of traveling very long distances on a single charge. And eventually we found this monster that could go 20 kilometers on one single charge. I think you can find similar scooters in any rental place in Dali and it will cost you around 80 yuan per day plus a deposit of 1000. We planned our route in advance and even prepared a map with all interesting places to stop. But before we go, I want to share with you a feeling that came over me while I was driving on the local roads here. I felt like I was driving back home. All those poplars planted along the road, weather that was very similar to ours, those clouds in the sky, I mean, you cannot often see clouds in China, fields around me, and even the soil looks like our Ukrainian black soil. If I take these mountains from the shot, it is almost like I'm driving to my grandmother's house. Probably because of that kind of resemblance to our homeland, that was one of the reasons why I really enjoyed this place. Значит, по такой вот прекрасной дороге ехали мы ехали и встретили какого-то китайца, который продает фрукты. Посмотрите, какой огромный инжир. Сейчас будем его пробовать с таким вот видом красивым. Да, очень спелый и сочный инжир. So our first stop was at the popular waterfront known for its steep S-shaped turn, which combined with the lake and surrounding buildings, given the feeling of being somewhere outside of China. This is why many young people and so-called influencers come here to take similar pictures. Скутер, если вы возьмете, просто сдать на входе, можно взять в аренду велосипеда, ну или пешком ходить, как мы, вот так. You will be surprised on how many coffee shops you can find there. In case you don't know, there are a lot of coffee farms in Yunnan province. That's why you can see a lot of coffee everywhere in Dali. So since we had a lot of places to visit, we decided no longer to stay at the waterfront and moved on. And our next stop was the famous Xinshan Bridge where usually people come to take their wedding pictures. This bridge attracts people with its non-typical Chinese architecture and all the ornaments and decorations. It's almost the same as the European streets in Wuhan city, which I talk about in one of my videos. Click that pop-up link if you didn't see it. If something resembles European architecture, so location is definitely going to be successful. Unfortunately, we couldn't stay there for a long time since we had a long road ahead of us, so we moved on. But first, let's take a quick break for lunch at a roadside cafe. Лучше, чем, блин, в каком-то дорогом ресторане, если пойти заказать. Он такой хороший, рассыпчатый. When we finished our lunch, where I successfully broke my ND filter, we continued to our next location, to a dreamy heaven village called Ideal Kingdom. By the way, I'm not sure if my translation is correct, but this is the real name of this village in Chinese. If you use these kind of phrases, it will add thousands of yens to the price tag. And by the way, if you think the picture in front of you looks like Greece, you're not wrong because it's a huge copy of a Greek town of Oya, which is on the island of Santorini. Well, just take a look at yourself. On the left side is China and on the right is Greece. And by the way, they don't try to hide this fact and often include Dali and Santorini in the name, which is pronounced in Chinese as Tali Shentuolini. Honestly, the location is chosen perfectly and huge Arhai Lake and mountains around just add overall price to the place. I bet not many of you knew about this side of China. The whole territory is divided into a private area where hotel guests are living and a public area for common tourists just like we are. After we finished with Chinese version of Oya, we headed to the traditional Chinese village of Sizhou, which is known for its rice putties and ancient buildings. So specifically this place is popular for its unusual circular wooden building, where obviously everyone taking pictures and causing huge traffic jams. So back in the day, Sijo was a full-fledged city and a military economic hub. 
This is also one of the places where soldier troops were located, and this is why you can find some interesting architecture in here. Overall, there's nothing special to say about this village. It's a quite similar to many others, but perhaps because of the green rice paddies and interesting buildings, we kinda liked it and stayed here for a couple hours. And also we tried Rose Petal Ice Cream here. Мы сейчас в городе Талии, и помимо вот таких вот пирожков, что я вам показал ранее, с лепестками наросленных, есть еще мороженое. Тоже якобы сделано из таких лепестков. В принципе, вкусно. вкусно. Throughout the entire road, you'll come across various locations where you can stop. But the main highlight of the journey is the constantly changing landscapes and beautiful nature around you. After passing one of the charming pagodas, we decided to stop near this picturesque cliff that turned out to be very popular. Here you can find many trails leading down to the water, and from the cliff itself you can find beautiful viewpoint of the lake and mountains. And of course this place also attracts wedding photographers. If you continue go down on the road, you'll discover this cute little island. If you want, you can even take a boat over there. By this time, we were already quite tired and the sun was beating down on us, so we only stayed there for about 10 minutes. And then we left because we still had a long way to go and it was already getting dark. But before it got completely dark, we decided to visit one more location, which was quite difficult to reach because our maps were giving us false directions. As it turned out, it was not a free location to enter, but since we arrived in the evening, there were nobody up there, so we just get in. Inside you can find a beautiful promenade and also an interesting structure similar to an aqueduct. I found in information on the internet that this structure was used as a decent pass for pumping water and irrigation. As you can see, people don't use it for that purpose anymore. So by the time, it was already getting dark, and this was our last stop on the road. One of the two large batteries of the scooter were completely dead, and we got only one battery left. Since we still had a long way to go, I even started to worry if we could even make it back on this battery. Fortunately, our electric horse did not let us down, and we safely made it back. The rest of the road took us a couple of hours, and it was completely dark, so I didn't film anything else. We also got lost on the way back, and unexpectedly we ended up in such a beautiful place. Just look at that poppy fields that look magical in the sunset. This is one of the reasons why we fell in love with Lizan, because wherever you go, you can find beautiful places. Сегодня мы находимся в старом городе Талии и взяли себе такие вот пельмени с яйцом и луком зеленым. I almost forgot to tell you about one of the most popular areas in Delhi, the ancient city of Delhi. After our breakfast, we decided to take a quick walk there, and since it was the day of our departure, we spent there only one hour and then headed to the train station. My personal opinion, if you're in Delhi, just don't waste your time here, because all of the old towns are pretty much the same everywhere. We've seen many of them in Lizan, and that was enough for us. Trust me, you won't see anything special here. Смотрите, в городе Дали какой бы перевиноград. Такой ни разу не видел, это, как, как я понимаю, такой юнайский сорт особенный. О очень сладкий, очень вкусный, и внутри нет косточек. And so, our fascinating journey through Yunnan province comes to the end. We explored Arhai Lake in the city of Dali. We ventured into picturesque mountains of Lijan. We accomplished all the goals we had set for this trip. We did exactly everything what we wanted for this trip. And with that peaceful feeling, we weighed our way back home. Just a few words about our wedding photos. Approximately two weeks later, we received all our pictures in the Baidu cloud storage. And about a month later, a huge package arrived with all albums, photo frames and even a canvas print of our full-length picture. Additionally, the wedding company that organized our trip provided us with a complimentary photo session in our city. Photos from this session turned out stunning as well. By the way, I'd like to remind you that you can see all these pictures on my Instagram. Follow me to see more. Значит, история такая. Мы встали раньше на вокзале и не доехали до нашей нужной остановки. В городе Кунмин есть две остановки. 
два вокзала, точнее, один это обычный вокзал у меня, а другой это южный вокзал. И вот нам нужно было на южный, но мы немножко ошиблись и приехали на просто вокзал города Кунминя. И все бы ничего, мы могли бы поменять поезда и приехать на день позже, но мне надо на работу. А у Лены забронирован экзамен, теоретический экзамен на вождение. Поэтому наша задача стояла так. Обязательно нужно приехать сегодня, вернуться сегодня. И поэтому мы сейчас такой квест совершили. В общем, мы сдали билеты быстро, попали на скорый автобус, приехали на, на в аэропорт, пили билеты на самолет в один город. С одного города возьмем скорый поезд до нашего города. И в теории мы сегодня вечером сможем успеть приехать прямо в город. Надеюсь. For now, the video really comes to the end. I want to thank all of you for watching, and I will be grateful if you subscribe to my channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, and see you in the next one.